Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and I finally watched When Marnie Was There. This was directed by, and this is challenging, so please bear with me on this name, Hiramasa Yonabayashi. I hope I got that right. And its English cast includes Haley Steinfeld, Gina Davis, and John C. Riley. This movie is based on the novel of the same name, written by Joan G. Robinson, and this is a very important movie in Ghibli's canon, as it was thought to be the last one for a while. It was not, but I'll be getting to that very soon. But it was ultimately Yonabayashi's final movie with Ghibli before he would move to Studio Ponic, and this was the final movie animated by Makiko Futaki please bear with me on the names, who passed away, unfortunately, in May of 2016. This movie tells the story of a young girl named Anna, voiced by Steinfeld. She has asthma and absolutely horrible self-esteem, so to help her with her asthma, she moves in with relatives in the Hokkaido region of Japan for the summer. And while she is there, she meets a young girl named Marnie, who is... It's very unclear whether or not she actually exists, if she's a real person or if it's someone of Anna's imagination. However, it's one of those things where she feels real, so it kind of... it can be up for debate. This was one of the Ghibli movies that I was looking forward to watching because I remember hearing about this first from Chris Stuckman. He held this movie in very high regard, and this movie holds a very special place for him. I believe, if my Stuckman lore is correct, or the knowledge of the Stuckman lore, is that he and his wife, Sam, went to see this movie at an incredibly private screening, like it was just the two of them, which was just, which must have been just great. And he spoke of the high quality of this, and so when I finally got to when Marnie was there, I was looking forward to it. And, yeah, the movie largely met my expectations. Is it my favorite Ghibli movie? I don't think so. However, this movie has a very great message and a strong a strong story that I actually found myself relating to in ways that I did not imagine. I'll say this till I'm blue in the face, but the animation in the movie is absolutely outstanding. Going from something like The Tale of Princess Kaguya, which looked more like a watercolor painting, to straight back into 3D CG animation. It was a bit jarring at first, but you can't argue with the results because some of the shots in this movie are just... It, it, they're almost too good to be true. Especially scenes involving lakes and sunsets. Those two are of particular beauty. And I have found that when it comes to Ghibli movies, I love the animation in all of them, however, it comes down to the story of whether or not I jive with them or not. And I really did jive with this one because I found myself relating to it, like I said, a lot more than I thought I would. I won't go too deep into spoilers here, but essentially the plot revolves around this girl, Anna, who is, who's got really bad, like, She's got asthma, and she's got really bad problems with her self-esteem. I have really bad problems with my self-esteem as well, and at one time, I had asthma. I don't have it anymore, I have not had to use an inhaler for a very long time, but for, I want to say, a period of between 6th through 8th grade, I had to... I had to do an inhaler, like, every... like, every night, two puffs twice a day. It was... It was not fun, but I don't know whether my lungs just got over it, or... A anyway, I've never had to use an inhaler once in 15 years, not even in an emergency inhaler. One of the opening scenes in the movie is when Anna has, I want to say, a combined anxiety-slash-asthma attack. It felt too real. I've been through something very similar involving when I was playing basketball, but I won't go too deep into that. This is not therapy hour, this is a this is a review after all. And throughout the movie you get the feeling that Anna is just she just 
she just feels alone. Like she feel like she's in a room full of people, and she just feels alone all the time. And the movie does a good job of throughout time showing that she's got quite a good reason to, because her family is not exactly stellar. When she meets Marnie, it feels a little weird at first, but then there's an instant connection. And speaking of Marnie, let's talk about her. Marnie was voiced by Kiernan Shipka, who starred in such things as Mad Men and was a voice actress on Legend of Korra, so she's been around. I love her voice, and I love Marnie. Her design is one of the more unique ones I've seen in a Ghibli movie. And again, spoilers, but let's just say that when it comes to Anna and Marnie, they have a lot more in common than they think. And that's what makes this movie work. Over time, the movie kind of lures you into a, okay, what's really happening here? Is Marnie a figment of imagination or, like, what's going on? And then by the end, everything just falls into place. It, it's... It's quite beautiful. And at the end of the day, I'm not sure if this is my favorite Ghibli movie. However, I think it's gotta be in the conversation for one of my favorites. I found myself relating to it more than I thought I would for a lot of reasons. But if you haven't checked this movie out, I do highly recommend it. And that is all for me. Thank you so much as always for watching. Well, I've got one, technically two Ghibli movies left to talk about. One of them is a particularly easy one, however, there is there is another in the form of Earwig and the Witch. Hopefully it's not as bad as people have made it out to be, but I'm not excited. Anyway, if you, if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications, that way when a new video drops, you'll be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam, and I'll see you in the next one.